Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn this into this. That's right, we're painting rooms today. That's right, you're looking at rims that have also done about 600,000 kilometers. These things are rusty. I'm guessing their original paint was silver. You can probably see that better on the other side. But they are definitely showing their age. Look at that. There is so much surface rust on that and I'm sure we will see it even better as we take it off and give it a better look. But today, we're going to be repainting them and turning them into a beautiful satin black. And so obviously the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen the wheel nuts with a brake bar if they don't come off straight away with your socket wrench. Then it's gonna be a matter of jacking up every tire and taking them off one by one and blocking them underneath. Make sure you find somewhere that is flat and secure and that you use wooden blocks that are gonna support the weight of the vehicle all around. You want this to be really secure because if your vehicle falls off, then you're in a lot of trouble. Now that we've got all four rims off, you're going to want to give them a really good high pressure clean. Get all that dirt and mud off that's probably been baked on and has probably been on there for a long time. After that, it's time to start grinding. When it comes to grinding, I found it was easiest to use something like a flexi disc that we used on the bull bar and take off the mass of the rust and baked dirt and paint. Or even your typical flapper disc is quite harsh and really effective in removing the rust. But definitely the best tool for the job was the wire brush reel that went on the angle grinder. This allowed me to get into all the little crevices that were really hard to reach with anything else and made the job really easy. Of course, I spent hours doing this and you probably will too, but the longer you spend grinding back the paint and the rust, the better the final product is gonna turn out. This is exactly what you've got to look out for, people. This is a small crevice in the rim that was very hard to get to. Um, obviously, you can see there, there is a lot of surface rust and a lot of that baked dirt I was talking about before. Make sure to use a wire brush wheel and really get into these places here because that's where the paint will peel and not stick properly and look awful if you don't. All right, so now that we've spent quite a long time sanding the paint back off these rims and getting the rust off, this is kind of what you're aiming for. So firstly and most importantly, you want to get rid of all that rust. You want to have a really smooth touch um, and get into all of these crevices. Honestly, there is no substitute for really putting in some time and elbow grease into the work here because the more you rust you get off, the more paint you get off, the better it comes up here the better the paint will look at the end. Now to conclude our grinding for the day, I'm just gonna quickly clean the back of the rims up and grind them down a bit because I'm going to put a coat of black paint on them later on just to make it look even neater and slow down that rusting process. Now before I get too carried away, I'm gonna to have to be able to cover the tire so I can paint just the rim without getting black all over the tire. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna measure the diameter of the rim, the part I wanna cover. I'm gonna use a punch, a piece of electrical wire, a pen, and some cardboard, and I'm gonna draw, try and draw a hole in the cardboard that'll just sit over here. So we've just got the cutout and it just focuses on the rim. So, the diameter of the rim was 44 centimeters. So I'm gonna want a bit of wire that's only 22. After tying the pen and the hole punch together in such a way that each tip 
measures to be 22 centimeters, which was the radius of my rim, we can then go ahead and use this as a compass to draw a circle. It was at this point I decided I wasn't very good with scissors, so instead I decided to hack the circle out with a knife, and it worked really well. And that's how you cut a circle. After preparing the rims for paint with a blow off and some prep wash, it was time to mix the undercoat. To use in an air spray gun, I thinned this undercoat out with methylated spirits. After the paint was mixed, it's time to prepare the tyres for paint. I decided to tape down the edge of the tyre just to ensure the paint didn't spill out onto the rubber. You don't have to do this if your circle is going to match the rim perfectly, but I thought it was a good idea just in case. I placed some bricks on top of the cardboard to ensure the cardboard didn't blow off in the process of painting. After undercoating the rest of the rims, I decided to give the wheel nuts a bit of a shine up. I found there was a nice chrome coating on each of these, so I decided just to leave them the way they were, and I thought they'd look good on the black rims. This is definitely optional, but I decided not to leave my hubs the way they were. As you can see, they're pretty rusty, they got dirt all over them, they're just in need of a clean up. So I decided to sand mine back with a wire brush and some sandpaper, and clean them up the same colour as the rims. And with that, I had my rims and hubs undercoated, ready to paint in the morning. After a very light sand on the undercoat, it was time to mix up the black paint. This is an industrial semi-gloss black paint and it's actually pre-mixed, ready for an air gun. So I just pour it straight into my machine and it's pretty much the same process as the undercoat. While waiting for that coat of paint to dry, my wipers are looking pretty rusty and run down these days. I decided to whip them off, scratch them back with a wire brush wheel and just give them a quick coat of black paint while I had it in the gun. After that, it was time to give the hubs their black top coat of paint. Be very mindful when doing this that it's very hard to get the underneath of those hubs and it's a good idea to rotate the hub 180 degrees and put some paint there as well. Before putting on the final top coat on the rims, I decided to pick them up and quickly put a black coat of paint on the back of the rims. Not only will this make it look a lot cleaner and more professional, but I will also slow down the rusting process of the rims. And now it was time to apply the final top coat of paint to the rims. This is your last chance to make sure the paint sticks smoothly and evenly and sticks well. You really want that orange peely effect when you apply the paint to the rims. You really want this to be your best coat of paint. In saying that, I do not recommend painting on a shocking windy day like it was here. This is not how I thought the wind was gonna destroy my paint jobs today. Anyway, if you had 
a freak accident like this in your painting, it's not hard to fix. Try and scrape as much of the rock off as possible and then it's quite easy just to go over it with a bit more paint. As long as you clean it up properly and the best you can, you won't even notice it. With everything nearly painted and looking fresh, I really wanted to make sure these wheels looked the best they possibly could. Prior to painting these rims, I purchased some tire foam. I've never used tire foam before, but it actually turned out really amazing. I was not disappointed in the least. And finally, it was time to put those fresh wheels back on my car. Just make sure that the hub is jacked up high enough so that the wheel can be lifted up onto the studs and secured with the wheel nuts. After all four wheels are back on and the nuts are tight, it's just a matter of letting all those blocks out and putting the car back on all fours.